Welcome to this new series of video about Azure Container Apps. I'm Frank McAdvocate, and today I am with Matt. My name is Matt. Hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Frank. Thank you for having Matt. me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Frank. well, go ahead. Tell us. Tell me all about containers on Azure, because as you know, what Frank? Do you know how many ways you can run a container on Azure? No. Fifty-two billion different ways. I, oh my God, yeah. this is amazing. I'm making that up. But there are a lot of different ways you can do it, Frank. There's just a really a lot of different ways. And some of the things I want to talk about today are the different types of services that we can run containers on. And then we are going to hone in on Azure Container Apps, as you mentioned at the beginning. A lot of things that we're going to do throughout this series. Um, we have a couple, I think like six or seven episodes, maybe eight to begin with, is just like kind of getting everybody used to using, introducing, Dot, building a .NET application on Azure Container Apps. We're going to even start right away like putting a monolith on Azure Container Apps because a lot of times you think of ACA as like microservices. Like, and you don't really need a... Uh, you could throw a monolith in a container and run it up on ACA. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll talk about that, but not in this episode. Uh, but we'll talk about like cost optimization, CICD, even uh, get into... .NET Aspire, which we all, all love, but that will be later. And this series will go on and on and on. We'll give you tips and hints of running uh, .NET apps on ACA to get everybody up and loving it. So, And it's all also with a GitHub repository where the code is is living and stuff like that. So yes. we'll make sure to add, share with you all the, the code, the links you need to get started. Yep. And, and, and even follow up with us. Exactly. Yeah. Feel free to open up issues on that repo. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Fix the code. If Frank wrote anything wrong on there, fix his code. <laughs> Write it. I I'm I'm always saying I'm the king of the typos. <laughs> like I do a lot of typos. Yep. No, you don't, Frank. Everything is everything <laughs> is pristine and perfect. But no, leave any issues. Tell us what you might want, what you don't like, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. We're always interested in what um fixing things up and, and making sure that you all have what you need to uh, learn the best. Frank, let's get going and start talking a little bit about where you can all run containers on Azure. I brought a slide. I do slides That's for deep. a living now. And it's, there it is. It is. It's not even the very best looking slide because the font is a little bit different on this screen than I looked on my, on, on my uh, desktop. But did you know you can run a container on Azure Functions, Frank, or you can yes. run? I knew that. You can you can do that. It's very useful, uh, and like with the isolated and things like that, you can always have your own. You have the control a bit more on like what's running in. The, the thing is, when you're deploying, you know, it's nothing new if you kn know about containers. Is the fact that what you put in the container will always run whatever it is. Yeah, and that's actually a really good point, Frank. And thanks for bringing that up. We can kind of back up just a little bit. Is that a container? You really put all your dependencies for your application. You have the runtime for your application and you have, oh, Frank, tell me if I'm wrong here, just like the minimal OS runtime or minimal OS that you need as well in it. So it's like everything that you need for your application to run is bundled in this, well, you container, you contained it up and you have it. And so what's cool is that you the runtime for Azure Functions and you kind of bundle that up into a container as well. And that's how you can run it. And that's really neat. So Azure Functions, if you're doing event-driven programming, perfect. If you're like an HTTP, uh, like a job on schedule, like a yep. trigger on, uh, you know, a bunch of events, like messaging often yeah. will have that uh, trigger, like on a database, many different trigger possible. Yep. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> we not, not to turn this into the Azure Functions show, but yeah, what Functions does, it gives you a lot of really cool things like bindings to things like, uh, let's say, table storage or blob storage, where you don't have to worry about newing up the function or newing up the objects to get access to it. It just, you decorate a, uh, your functions definition, and then you have the objects that just kind of come in for you. So anyways, we'll talk about, maybe we'll start up a thing on functions uh, later, but yeah, Azure Functions, one place where you can run your app as a container. The second place, and we'll call it maybe the, the grandparent, of everything for web development is Azure App Service. App Service. Yeah. It's, it's been there for, it's the, yeah, it's the oldest service in, in those services on screen. Yeah, right for sure. And that's when you traditionally think, oh, I'm going to run a uh, web app on Azure. I mean, at least I 
think of app service, right? Because really, as you mentioned, that's it's been there forever. It's made for hosting web apps, web apps, both front ends and 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 back ends, and throw all your and it can host containers both on Windows, uh, with the Windows runtime, iOS and iOS, Windows OS, and also a Linux, right? And yes. so with app service, you can get scaling, load balancing, and everything like that. So it's the classic platform as a service. So you could even run multiple services in one app service if you want. Obviously yeah. they will share their resources, but it's possible. Yeah. Uh, and so the next one, Azure Container Instances. So this is like, containers on demand. And it's really kind of maybe the least opinionated way to run a container up in Azure. Now you could still set up, um, or you cannot, they're like, there's no um, scaling or load balancing set up for you, right? So it's just like, I'm gonna spin up a container and I need to do something with it. Azure container instances are the way you wanna do it. So you're gonna be, responsible for rolling any orchestration or management or whatever. So it's like the bare bones of running the container. So like functions and app service, they give you something over the top to help you with management container instances is just start it, start it. And uh, good luck. Here it is. Yeah. And, and I think you, you have it very quickly yes. and it run and like you should it's more like a job. Like I want to crunch all that data. Mm -hmm. I want to import all those files. And when you're done, vanish. Because you don't want to, like you don't put a service in there because it's it's costly, right? Yes. Because of that, have, 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 I cannot say that word properly, but like because it's available. Yeah, yeah, it's on, right? And so you just, like you said, you turn it on, turn it off. And it's for minimal, I don't want to say minimal jobs because you put important things in there for sure, but it's um, short-lived. And then it's just, I use it in, in some of my uh, processes. Mm -hmm. I have personal processes, and I'm using that. Just like spawn in, run for a few seconds, and boom, finish. Yep. And then for one that when you really need all of orchestration and management is Kubernetes or Azure Kubernetes service or the version of Kubernetes that runs on Azure. That is everything. It's a big, big, big rock of... Uh, container orchestration. And so here you're essentially, you're the Kubernetes administrator. You get all the control. You can dial all the dials, pull all the levers, um, decide when things spin up, how to manage uh, scaling, how to manage when something accidentally, if something fails, how to fail over on that. So it's the, the big one, right? Yeah. And so, well, with, with all the bells and whistle, but it's still managed. So it's easier to create a cluster in Azure Kubernetes services in AKS than like running it on your own yes. machine. Because I heard, I never did even try it, but I heard it's, it's a pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. It, so, yes. It's definitely like a big plus, but yes. it is for like when you have tons of services and things like that. Yeah. Yep. So it is fully managed, right? And you do get like, and it shouldn't be undersold, but you do get, um, um, security built in with with all the Azure that you're running on there as well. So you can log in with a default Azure credential and all that other goodness where they can they talk on the Azure backbone that's not connected to the internet as well. So yeah, don't I'm not trying to undersell that at all, but that's a big, big deal. The the managed portion when you're running up there. There, there there's one that that the show is about or this like this video is about and like we didn't talk about it. No. It looks like that. <laughs> all right. All right, so Azure Container Apps, really, it gives you the best of really everything that we talked about before. Like, it, it, it's like you mash Kubernetes together, you mashed app service together, you even mash functions together because uh, Azure Container Apps can run as an event-driven service and mm -hmm. you come out with Azure Container Apps. It runs on top of Kubernetes itself, but you don't get all, you don't really go down to Kubernetes, right? You don't have to be the Kubernetes expert to run Azure Container Apps. And it supports Dapper. It supports, frankly, pronounce it Keda or Keda? I, never... I don't know, I would say Keda, but like, uh, yeah. That's how, that's how I would pronounce it too. And that's uh, Kubernetes Event Driven Architecture. Is that what how the acronym? Anyways, it's the event driven, like scaling rules and stuff. So you could scale based on traffic and CPU 
uh, and memory of whether to scale up or scale down. Uh, Envoy is um, uh, ingress and excress uh, 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 settings. So container apps, and we'll, we'll get deeper into it, is a, a cool way to like run your application on Azure in a container in a serverless way, because you could scale all the way down to zero. You can leave it up and running all the time, but if you're not using it, you can set a setting to say, go away and uh, don't don't respond until I need you again. Yeah, so it's a serverless container. There's security also, that's pretty important. We'll, we'll yep. see that later. That's pretty pretty convenient. And like I, I think, like you say, it's like Kubernetes, like it's a smaller Kubernetes where like you don't have all the details of like how it runs in the back end. So like, I would say it's less scary if you're not used to Kubernetes. So it's more friendly. Yeah. You still have a lot of resources and feature just yeah. like in uh, app service and other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it runs all your Linux container without any problem. Exactly. And service discovery. I didn't put service discovery in there too. I mean, that's kind of maybe part of the dapper where you can actually discover for microservices, you have service A, let's say a uh, product um, catalog can discover the service B, let's say a shopping cart, um, without you having to know what the IP addresses are beforehand, which very cool thing as well. So, and it's also good for monoliths, which we will talk about in our next episode. So you don't have to go pure microservice initially. Oh no. You could just go bring your monolith with uh, <laughs> not a lot of uh, code changes at all. No, no, you know, you could, you could be running one, like, it doesn't make sense to go with like AKS if you have just like one or two container. Yeah. And like maybe app service is, doesn't give you a lot of functionality to kind of like sc scale them individually, mm -hmm. but with Azure container apps, you could do that. So if you have one or two container or three or even more, but like I'm talking like s smaller example or solutions, then it makes sense to go there because you will be able to say, you know what, like my front end, keep it alive scale to one minimum, the API scale to zero. So if, you know, if nobody's like calling you, just like go, go save my money and scale <laughs> yeah, to yeah. zero. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you, you could do plenty of things like that, like secure different things in there. Uh, like the Dapper integration is pretty cool. I did the, we, we won't cover it and because it's a little bit more advanced, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting over there. It's natively support. Mm-hmm. All the the login. I know we'll be talking about monitoring. Yep. Also, like all the alerts, the matrix we can follow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So that's just the quick the quick intro to uh, all the containers uh, services running on Azure, Azure Container Apps in particular. And in the next couple episodes, we'll get into running your .NET application on ACA. Wonderful. Well, thanks, and uh, stay tuned for more. Thank <music> you.